Planning Board meeting for Monday, uh, August 10th, 2015. I uh, would like to thank HCAM for taping the meeting. We're down a couple members, and they might want to review uh, what we did here today. Uh, the agenda today, uh, the solar panel uh, application will be continued to our next meeting. Uh, they did not get through CONCOM, and they need another meeting with them. Uh, we have some approval not required and some other smaller items. And then we're going to be talking about the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, the site plan amendment we talked about before. A bunch of miscellaneous things, but I think it's a relatively quick night, hopefully. But we, we're here until uh, the time. So, anyway, that's where we're at. Let me start with the continued public hearing for the Marathon Solar. Look for a request... Uh, a vote, a motion to continue to the 24th at what time, Jennifer? Um, 7.30. Okay. So moved. Second. second. It's moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Do we need to <laughs> file, uh, ask for extension of time to? Okay. Until? About the first of uh, the first. Of okay. Uh, look for a motion to uh, extend the time for the stormwater permit to the 31st of of August 2015. So moved. Second. Moved. Seconded. Further discussion. Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. I think we're next on. 102 Fruit Street, which is the land that, or part of the land that the town bought. Dividing it into four parcels. Mm -hmm. lot, lot one gets conveyed to the town, which is, why don't you just kind of. All this area. All that area. Lot two is. is it's really lot 2A, 2B, 2C, which will be retained by the uh, Pratt family. Okay. And then uh, in the other two. Little triangles are not building lots. Correct. Was there any reason why they were broken like that? I'm, um, I'm just curious. Yes. Um, the during negotiations with the town, um, the town agreed to purchase lot one, and then the discussions turned to lot two, and the town requested um, a little more land to put it. Uh, simply and uh, the estate agreed to convey by gift uh, lots 2B and 2C to the town in the event that any portion of lot 2 were to leave the Pratt family. Okay. And lot 3 is to add down to Mary's lot? Or yeah, that, that was already done. Totally that, we already right. did that. Okay. Right. So that's that's what we're doing tonight. Jennifer? Yeah. Does it meet all the requirements? It does. Can, can I just ask one yeah, question? Sure. It's not really about applicability, I guess, but there was discussion about um, some of that land being used for Scout Lodge. Was that to be on town land, or was that just... Scout, um, the town has entered into an agreement with the Hopkinton 
uh, Scout Leaders Association, uh, Inc., uh, to, uh, I guess the, word, the best word is to host a one, an area, I think it's 1.6 acres, somewhere on Lot 1, pursuant to a master plan which will be created at a date set sometime in the future. Okay. Prior to conveyance of Lot 1 to the town, the estate will record a deed restriction granting HSLA um, that right um, so the town will then, uh, when the, the deed is given to the town, it will be subject to the rights of HSLA in the Lot 1. Okay, so it will be within the town park, not yes. And so there will be further discussions, I assume, as to whether we put conservation restrictions or different things depending on. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that the town would put conservation restrictions on its own property. Okay, you want to open it up? Okay. I mean, the the there there's uh, this on the agenda item for the selectman tomorrow night is master planning for this property. So if you're interested, go to the selectman. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We'll go ahead. Just to be clear. So lot one is what the town agreed to purchase. Right. So we're just really talking about dividing off those like, two little triangles on lot two. No. Um, the parcel as it stands now is everything except that little lot which has already been sliced off. So the current lot is lot one, lot two A, lot two B, lot two C. And this plan divides that one lot into one, two, three, four parcels. And it is approval not required. So but anyway, look for a motion to endorse. Or are there any other questions? No. Okay. Look for a motion to endorse the plan. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone Aye. opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And we'll get the special pen, and we need two signatures in the date. And <coughs> I'll pass it down a little bit. There's only one page? Two. There's two pages. The second one's just the vicinity map. Oh, okay. It's like a lot of space. Two right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I think they want the, the hard copies or a hard one set or two. They can have Okay. Have fun at the registry. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item up is Legacy Farms uh, special permit. Uh, 47 signal timing. We talked a little bit about it at our last meeting. Uh, the signal timing is actually was due in July, but doing a traffic count in July doesn't make any sense. Um, so we talked about extending it to October. How about maybe like October 15th to give them time to, to write up a report and that way they can do it after the school's been in session for a couple of couple of weeks. Look for a motion to extend the time for master plan special permit condition 14 to the 15th of October of this year. So moved. Second. 
Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Okay. Next one is Hayden Woods. Uh, I think they're really here for performance bond. The performance bond, yep. Request, you know, it's a reduction to 258, 600, I believe. Correct, yep. It's based on what uh, they had put together with the 20% contingency. Okay. Any questions for the board members? Yeah, I did have one question. Okay. Um, obviously, they made some reductions here. It's favorable, correct? For you guys. What was the basis for that they made those decisions to reduce some of those? I think it was just some of the additional work that had been done. So we had uh, another week or 10 days had passed before uh, and beta went back out again. So the contractors continue like they're working. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, I think it just reduced some of these items yeah, by some small fees. You know, yeah. they, just constantly. If they get it done, it doesn't matter to us, I don't think. Okay. Uh, any further discussions? Okay, look for a motion to reduce the... Uh, Performance bond to two hundred fifty-eight thousand six hundred dollars. So moved. Moved and seconded. For the discussion, seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Next item on that is, uh, I guess there's some. We got a, a letter requesting to change the name to Davenport, which kind of takes the etched in stone and right. kind of makes it a little bit easier. We have a, I thought we had a draft letter somewhere to uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, supporting that. Does anyone have a problem with, you know, normally we don't weigh in on the names of names, but quite frankly, it makes it a lot easier for them. To, I, it, it, Elaine was happier, I believe, because we have two street names that are... Correct, I think it was a paper street. Buckland Street, Street or something like that, a little paper road, something like that. Claire? Um, yeah, I, I certainly support changing it from Buckland to Davenport because of the confusion that there are in the uh, paper street. But um, first of all, they're still going to have to put up the standard green street sign. Yes. Just Davenport yep. Lane. Um, the way things stand right now, this stone is not going to say Davenport Lane. It's still going to say Davenport. So it's very clear to everybody that this was a development sign that got put up, which is what we, you know, don't allow. And, um, you know, the message gets sent that that's the way you do it if you want to. You do what you want and you ask questions later. Um, unless it says Davenport Lane, it's not. It's not going to look like a street sign. It looks like a development name, which is right back to where the problem started. Um, if they want to take that stone out and flip it around to the blank face on the other side, or recarve it with Davenport Lane, but as long as it just says Davenport, um, everybody going by is going to know what that is. It's a development name. It doesn't it doesn't make it any better, in my opinion. As long as there's a standard street sign there that says Davenport Lane, I'm okay. I'm okay personally okay with the sign saying Davenport. I, I, I don't necessarily need see the need for it to say Lane on it. We'll have the street sign that says Lane. At least I think the confusion, which was the public safety aspect, has kind of gone away. I agree with Claire. Um, I think at the last meeting we didn't say change the name to Buckland said put Buckland Street. And I think to send a consistent message, having the lane name uh, is consistent with what we voted on last time and consistent with what we've said before. And I also agree with Claire, it sends the wrong message that kind of do what you want and come back and ask permission later. Uh, it just sends, I think, the wrong message. In. I mean, that's what we talked about at the last meeting. Yep. And we agreed to it at the last meeting. So, yeah, I'm in agreement with Claire and John. I mean, there wasn't any ill will with the, you know, the way the sign was, you know, 
in, instilled. I think that you know, as the the wall went up, you know, we talked about it internally about you know trying to get something granted to make it look nice. So I, I don't, again, I don't think it was. Uh, you, know. you know, if I might add, with all due respect, I don't think anyone ever comes before this board and says, "Yeah, we intended ill will. We were trying to squeeze something through." That's always the answer. Um, Straight, frankly, the best way to send the message that this should not happen again is to make it be corrected and to stick by what this board has approved. It was not approved. And what we voted at the last meeting was to change it to put the street name, make Parkman Street or Davenport Street, but not just to leave what looks like a development to everybody's driving by. Is it written somewhere, or is it just customary practice? Oh, I'd have to remember back from our discussions <laughs> two weeks ago. Chloe, do you remember? Do what? I remember? What? Is this practice documented somewhere that we don't label, that we don't name neighborhoods? You know, Brian, if you wanted to look, we don't do it anymore. If you wanted to look through the minutes of the last 15 years for every development that's come up that's proposed to have a permanent development name, you can read that the board said we don't do that, we don't like that done, we don't want to create enclaves, we don't want to create safety confusion, um, and so it's not written as a law. But if somebody wanted to read the 15 years worth of minutes, you see it's been consistent. Legacy Farms, too. Legacy Farms. I mean, Legacy Farms, 940 units, and it's good enough for Legacy. Okay. It sounds like we're looking for the word lane to be added to the sign. Okay. I think that's kind of the consensus of, of board members. Or if they choose to just not. I, it's, yeah. That's the other option. Yeah. It's, okay. Are we willing to support the by sending a letter to the selectman to street name change? Well, not the letter that you have written. No, it changes to land. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. I see what you're saying. That's, sure. a, that's if they choose to, sure. if they want to rename it Devonport Lane. Yeah, they change the sign, change yeah. the carbon. Okay. 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 So then is it in their court to whether they want to just remove it and put the stone in there? Or? It's up to them. It, it, they have that, that option. Yeah, well, I guess figure it out. So I guess the most sense. So I think if it says Davenport Lane, it's still, uh, I think you need to keep the size. So I think we need uh, the lettering. So we're going to have to you know, take out some more of the, the stone and get a bigger piece of granite, I think, to get, you know, to make it look right. the way it uh, was. Keep the same font, right? To right, to keep it. Font, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I would make a motion that the developer of Hayden Woods had the option to either remove the existing Davenport sign and replace it with a blank face or re-letter it to state Davenport Lane. Okay. But the existing sign needs to be removed. Or, or it could say Buckland Lane if that's what they so choose, because right now it's currently Buckland Lane. So you're just geared towards getting the, the full street name in there. Is what or, or no name, or no street name. Or no, or just no, have right. no street name. Yeah. But I, yeah. I think that the um, we should support the change from Buckland to Davenport because it's confusing. If there's another street even paper that's got the Buckland, that's probably better. Okay. So let's, Claire had a motion. Did, did that get seconded? Did you get Second. Got seconded. So basically, that takes the major subject. So, more discussion? 
Everyone ready for a vote on Claire's motion? Can she just repeat what is actually on the table? <laughs> okay. So should we, should we, well. Uh, Kobe we can re read it back let's here. Let's see if I can read my own language. Yes. <laughs> The developer Hayden Woods uh, either removed the avenue toward sign or re uh, letter it with, or leave a blank, or re letter it to state Davenport Lane. Correct. And then Brian said, What about the Or leave it blank. Okay. I, I could add to that that we recommend to the selectmen. That it be changed to Davenport. No, we will do that separately. Do it separately? We'll okay. do that separately. Okay, so we got Claire's motion on there, which is to, to fix the sign. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, so now, Claire, you're on a, on a roll here. How about uh, uh, a write a letter to support the change of the name. Okay, I move that the board send a letter to the selectmen recommending the street name be changed from Buckland Lane to Davenport Lane to remove confusion. Um, oh, just period. Period. Yep. No. I mean, we can explain if we want the letter why, but... Okay. Second. Okay, motion has been seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And I guess we'll have to rework on the letter early tomorrow morning. It's not going to be much. But, okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, have yeah. you had an opportunity to take a look at the, uh, the, the, the bond? I guess the tri party agreement itself. No. Was that? Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. I have a copy of it. Yeah. yeah. She had made, um, she had sent us one that the town had used, and then she, I guess, had read through it and said she made one or two changes, which we then made and sent it back to her. And she said, okay, I'm going to send this to the board for the review. And then if they vote on it, she put the number. 586 in there, so I didn't know what the process was to, or the two, excuse me, 256. Okay. Um, so I didn't know what the process was. Or how you Do we need to sign that one? Well, the public yes. review it. I, I, I have it with me, but um, it's only if you wanted to, you know, I didn't know that you hadn't seen it. <laughs> it, was, it must have missed me. Between the, obviously the Bank of Town and, and us. Elaine was happy with it, Kobe, right? After she didn't the have changes. any further comments. Just said okay. it's okay to discuss it at this time then make copies. But so I have it, but I didn't. She actually produced it, um, produced a document for us. She sent okay. it to us. She changed the, uh, the address of the ownership. Okay. <coughs> okay. I think this is the typical security bond that we kind of go for it. Uh, motion to uh, sign the uh, performance security agreement. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. So which one do you want us to sign? You got one that you want us to sign there? And I think this requires just about everyone to sign. I think it does, yeah. Yeah. So this must be, I certainly hope this is the same one. <laughs> it, it, it is the same one, yeah. It is. What, what did you say that needed to be filled out? Be I think just when it gets recorded um, oh. here, oh. I think okay. that just needs to, that just needs to sure. be filled out the time of recording, and then outside of that, okay. uh, the amount is actually listed. I have the date up there. Okay. The decision the planning board that just needs to be um, 
filled out the Here, time. Our just, signature is the bag the, and then yours. Just put it to the signature bag. Mm -hmm. Did we vote to sign? Yes, we did, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. I can come get it tomorrow. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay, it looks like we're all, all set. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank Everybody you. Knows. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I think it's uh, 8 o'clock. Just about. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's three more minutes. Let's do one thing before that. Uh, Christian Estates, do we know what lot needs to be released? 3B, uh, and we have a bond for that, so the motion would be to uh, release Lot 3B of Christian Estates. So moved. Moved. Second. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And then we'll be probably very close to 8 o'clock here. Time for one more. Yep. Uh, let me talk quickly for two minutes about Cumberland Farms, uh, 91 West Main Street. Um, I met with uh, a consultant, Beta, uh, out at the site. Uh, we talked about it. We talked about the various areas that might be needed. And we came to the conclusion that if we got a triangle of land that's 12 feet, this would be a right triangle, 12 feet by about 65 feet, and that 65 feet is off of the assessor's, or off of our GIS map, and that corner of the triangle on the 65 would be uh, the right triangle is at the property line with um, with the golden spoon matches up there with their 12 foot easement and then 65 feet gets us to I'll say the western edge of the eastern driveway at Cumberland Farms so that basically right where the radius of for that parking lot we would start the lane and so that's about 390 square feet all subject to survey etc uh, we then met the next day with the two representatives of Cumberland Farms uh, they seemed pretty amenable to that uh, we didn't talk whether it be a full gift or whatever uh, but the conclusion was that the town should go and do the engineering to set up uh, an easement plan and also do some uh, survey work to make sure that it physically can, it's more of a elevation whether it works or not. Uh, with maybe a goal of trying to get that for the special town meeting as a, hopefully a gift of, of land. But basically we're doing all the all the engineering to, to get it done. So 
I'll be working with Elaine to try to put together a, a scope of work to, to, to see about getting that done. The planning board has a few funds that we could use for engineering and then also in August I believe we will be getting the uh, money from uh, Paul's development that might be used for that too. So. I'm not sure it's a big. It's going to be a big deal per se, but uh, we'll put together a scope of work for for that effort. Maybe a phase two, which is to do the overall design <coughs> aspect of so us. And you know, one one guy starts it and then yeah, uh, finishes it. Uh, is the hope to do some of the engineering work in September, September October? Or? Yes, yes, and uh, with possibly maybe construction next summer or so when the Muse is going to be doing all their work. So it would kind of open up with them. Uh, I don't know if you've been by the Starbucks area. Yep. There's a little bit more of a mound than I originally had thought along there, so we might have to do a one-foot retaining area or mm -hmm. slope it a little bit more in berm, but uh, it's starting to look pretty good, I yeah, think. Absolutely. So. Well, Anyway, that's kind of the update. Any further questions on that? Just want to make sure everyone is kind of aware of what's going on. Okay, it's it is now for sure eight o'clock, even on the the clock uh, here. So let's talk about uh, ninety-eight Hayden Road, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. I think it's Chuck and Dan. As we talked last time, we felt that. We needed to uh, send out letters to the uh, neighborhood, uh, which we did. Uh, and uh, I see a few neighbors here, so I guess the letters were received. So that's, uh, I guess, that's good. So anyway, why don't you kind of go through with the board again the changes? And so we're all kind of talking all the right, same thank thing. You, Mr. We, Chair. I think we determined at the last meeting this is a, can be done at an administrative level right. and does not require, uh, I'll say, a formal mm -hmm. hearing. But Chris Waldman, one of the directors of the ACA. Everybody knows Dan. He's in charge. I'm along his window dressing, so <laughs> I'll let him take take right. over. I got promoted, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the, the whole idea here was to try to get a few more parking spots for the use up there. Um, they are getting a lot of activity um, from from the uh, from the construction. A lot of a lot of new people want to join and, and take the classes up there, so they're really scratching for a few extra spaces. So when we came last time, we had uh, this auxiliary parking lot. We added some spaces facing the eight row. Um, we did hear from you know, you sent out the neighbors. We did hear from the neighbors, uh, and we took that into consideration, and we revised the proposal to eliminate the parking heading into Hayden Road. Okay. But we still wanted to pick up a few spaces, so we did extend the parking down facing Hopkins Road to the Loop Road. Um, kept. A minimum of 14 feet, mostly 28 feet, to keep the same landscaping that we had in there. We had a landscape berm there before. We're going to keep that there. We are going to pick up two spots right next to the existing garage, and those are going to be reserve spots. There'll be signs there for the executive director uh, and the uh, and the artistic director. So we'll have basically employee parking right there that's committed to that. So they're not taking spaces that would other be used by clients. And the other option we looked at was we wanted to try to get more parking in the main parking lot. And what was hindering that was the handicap space calculation. Because we had to base that on the entire shared parking agreement, about 150 spaces. Although on a daily basis, there's no need for that many handicapped parkings for, for a lot that has about 40 spaces. Uh, but we couldn't really way to get around that, but what we wanted to do was move. We had five handicapped spots right here by the main entrance. We wanted to reduce that down to three, put two over here, 
with a with a uh, walkway coming right up to there, and that would that would give us an additional three spaces in here. So we end up with about 43 total spaces where before we had 43. You end up with how many? Picked up. Picked up two, five, six, seven. So it's a plus it's seven. It's a plus seven. Right. So you were permitted for 33? Yeah. So now you've got a total of what? I think we got 43. So you picked up 10? If I no, counted right. right. Yeah, I don't think we picked up 10, though. I guess I'm not in charge anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we the, the point of what we're trying to do here, though, is is one of the things that became clear to us is the formula for the handicapped spaces was based on the high school parking lot as well, because although they had their handicapped spaces accounted for, they're all down by the high school, so yeah. they're not going to service anything here. So by putting them here, we believe this door also, and we're going to determine this, is also handicapped accessible, so they could come right here. In all likelihood, during the time when this lot is going to be used only, these m are more than sufficient, and it opens up some easy spaces up front for us here as well. So um, this, this building is handicapped accessible, isn't it? Yes, right through here. So, so these spaces so those are, are right logical there. to be there sure. too. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. So it, 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 what we really tried to do was to listen to the neighbors, take into consideration what their concerns were try to reach a compromise situation where we could pick up a few parking spots without facing out towards Hayden Row Street. And I think Dan did a wonderful job. I really think he did. He, he was very creative in how he went about doing this, and it, and it all fits. Well, questions from the board, and then we'll get to the neighborhoods. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a little um, confused. The new spaces are along the, um, the loop road. I don't have the old plan to compare it to. So, which ones are the new ones, Dan? Are they all new, or no, how many? How many was the new? Oh, just the two. Okay, so count out for me again where all the new spaces. You got two on the side, the two we by got, the garage. Yeah, we got two here. Two, we got four. two here. We picked up three here, and we picked up. Uh, actually, I think we picked up five here for some reason. Oh, okay, but they're they're all yeah. along. Basically, they're all along the loop road. They're on the loop road. So here. you had parking on the loop road anyway. Right. You just oh, yeah. put a few more yeah. in. Yeah. Exactly. And so the only real newly created area is those two on either side of the. Yes. Oh yeah, and my other question, Chuck, those two handicapped ones, those new ones, do those um, empty out onto? A, I mean, I see sidewalk on the side. Does the further one empty out onto a sidewalk where someone could easily Well, this is going on? to be paved right here, because this is our dumpster here. Yeah. So this is paved right to here. So they get out this side, because yeah. this is the loading, unloading right, dock. Right. All right. And then this is all paved, so they can go right onto the oh, okay. sidewalk. Okay. Or in, in, in reality, they're probably going to go this way. Well, okay, but, but, but it puts them onto a logical... Right. Pavement. It also serves yes. a function of getting two handicapped spaces close to this we're not giving up use of this. Right. It's just going to be used differently. Right. No, I just couldn't see the sidewalk that spot went out onto. And also, um, this is, is this concrete pad all the way here, or not? Uh, yeah, this, yeah. This line is the concrete pad. I think. I think to Claire's point, we should probably, you know, put some sort of a sidewalk in the back there, so they can come down this uh, aisleway here and, and go either direction if they choose to do that. Instead of going through instead the parking of, Instead lot. of going through the parking yeah. lot, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the new dumpster site, it's still going to have an enclosure. Yes. Right, yes. it's just yes. been moved. And so that's going to be not, where was the old one, where was the old spot? Over here. Right at the okay, so that's actually maybe even a little less visible. Oh, yeah. Because it's yeah. Like behind it's a lot the building. Yeah. And there's enough room for the truck to get in with the handicap spots. Yeah. Actually, it's better over there. I have one question, Chuck. Okay. On the calculation for the handicap yes. spots, you mm -hmm. talked about adding the 150 from the, the school, mm -hmm. right? Is that required to do that by law? What? Well, uh, my understanding is, and Danny can speak this a little better than I can, is that I think if we use just our parking lot, yeah. we'd only be required to have two. Right. Okay. But. On event, we have a cross parking agreement with the high school. You, that's why you have to include right. the total calculation. So on an event night, all right, they're not all going to fit here. This is a lighted walkway. Okay. This is going to be main parking. We still have to be able to account for five handicap spots. I think we could use the school's handicap spot to kind of meet the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law rule. Really I, I get it because they're so far over yeah. there. That's exactly. Right. <laughs> it's a yeah. I get it. Yeah, to that point, I seem to recall when we were looking at the site plan. Does anybody else remember this discussion that we talked about on event night, you doing, if it's allowed, like a 
a temporary, like you could put, you yeah, know, when it's a big thing, you could put someone, because so <coughs> if you have a lot of people who should have more handicapped, but you don't want to take it up all the time with the handicap, with the temporary thing. We did, that's we that's did that's excellent. Yeah. yeah, we did discuss that, Claire, yeah. and we can do that right here. Right. These could have temporary handicap signs that go in on event nights. Exactly. So, I don't know if you have to paint them blue, I don't know what that regulation is, but we'll figure that part out. Bucket with sign. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's what it ends up being. Yeah. It works. But you have to that point. You have no rights to make any temporary parking, handicap parking here. That would open up a negotiation with the school. They are tight with student parking. Yeah. They're tight. So it, we 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 went that road. We went down a bunch of roads. All right. And we thought, well, then we're going to have to give them two student parking spaces over here during the day. It got really complicated. We said, let's just, let's just get them right here. I guess I was just thinking the events are off uh, during off school hours. That's correct. That's correct. That's why. But I, I mean, asking. we could do the same thing Claire is talking about. We could make these kind of temporary handicap that only go up on event nights. Right. That's what know? I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. If 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 that's what your experience is and whatever events you're doing and you start to see that maybe we could always approach they've been great yeah. they've been yeah. terrific to work with I mean I don't think anyone in the school or whatever if, if you have a problem not having enough handicaps parking anyone's <laughs> yeah. gonna say no to that one yeah. Yeah. that's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think Dan did a really really good job of making it work on the site right now self-contained I have a question there's yeah. something that we did discuss when you were came to us originally over long ago that was when this parking down here fills up mm. how do you prevent people from I mean people come down they're gonna find out it's it's filled right but other people will come behind them right how what was this what was the solution to that we didn't incorporate this turnaround here all right with but that's the not big enough to make a we could extend this more square, if, yeah. you, if you know what I mean. The, the thing we're fighting is we've got a grade here. Right, no, I know the So grade. we'd have to build something up to make that quote unquote turnaround, you know. But that, that's, that's a problem inherent with kind of dead end parking lots like this. You're right. But the way we've got it designed is a lot of this. This is the school, this is the performance center. Right? All the classes occur, over, most of the classes occur over here and here. Parents coming in here, dropping off. That's their circle and they're out. Right. All right. Parents coming in here, that's their circle and out. So it's it's pretty well designed, you know, for for the the, the functions that are going to occur here. <clears throat> and, and my recollection was the reason you couldn't put an exit out onto the school driveway was there was a grade or something. It was a pretty steep grade. Yeah, there. it's a real steep grade. And, and then we dump out right. At Kind of you right in the intersection. Yeah. It's yeah. a shame you can't have a have a an, ex, a, a negress to keep that bottle from happening. Well, they always they always have the handicap spots to turn around. So they're probably going to be able to yeah. Those are going to be yeah. <laughs> okay. Further questions from the board? Okay, neighbors. Come on up here. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Small. I wanted to see the revised plan. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dan, yeah. for the changes you made. So, these were the <coughs> spaces that were originally in the original plan from 2013. One, seven, two, seven three, four, five, two. six, seven. And you've eliminated the additional spots along this yes. road, and then these were the two for the director and executive director? One this side. one and this one. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay, on either mm -hmm. side of the grass. Thank you. And I think in the original plan, I don't, I didn't bring a copy with me, but there was a lot of landscaping mm -hmm. along here. That's correct. And I don't see that in this drawing. This was just to <laughs> illustrate the parking spaces. It wasn't to amend the landscaping plan. Okay, so the landscaping plan stays as it was originally. Yes. There'll be some. I'm oh, not by sure the way, name and, name and address. Jean Hagen, 105 oh. Hayden Road. Pardon okay. me. Oh, you made it. Yes. <laughs> Good. Yes, I did. Okay. Had my dates confused. Oh, well, okay. Do you know that landscaping issue? In Lane's memo, she mentioned that there was going to be a discussion of ad planting along Hayden Road. Well, that was before we that saw was when this. That was when I had the parking spaces. 
Yeah. No, this is the memo for tonight. Hey, hey, Claire, she, yeah. I had to ask Elaine to, to after we received uh, Janine's letter, I said, talk to Danny about maybe making a berm or something to try to fix it. He fixed it in another way. I see. Okay, so that's, so this, this is, okay. Yeah. So, last question was, there's yeah. landscaping that I can't see in this there's, there's plan. Landscaping. Right. The rhododendrons, is that what was mentioned? I want to say ink something. Yeah, I, I don't have the original landscape plan with but uh, yeah, we built, there was, a, there was kind of a berm, a couple of rhododendrons, mm -hmm. I think some ink berries or something like that. Nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's definitely yeah. an improvement. Yeah. Yep. And then you put some of the spots down here. These are additional on the other side of this? No. No. no I we heard picked you up, we picked up three spots here where they used okay. to be. Where are the silos? Too. Okay. The silos. Okay, great. great. Thank you. Okay. That works. That works? Yeah, it works. Yeah. Thanks oh, very much. That's good. If we make people happy, that's, that's, that's really, that works well. <laughs> Any other public comments? Uh, I'm a neighbor of okay. 108 in rural sure. Paul DeBona. Yeah, Paul. Uh, I'd like to see uh, the transformer has been added on Hayden Row on the north side of uh, uh, Right in here, I think. Yes. As, as a condition of the permit, I believe it requires to be screened. So I'd like to see that addressed. And we've talked, Chuck, and, mm -hmm. and, and others uh, have you can, about that. We, I'm, I'm we'd a, like to see as much as you can do. And, and I know, unfortunately, Eversource yes. restricts a lot of it. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, we talked about shrubbery versus a fence with a gate because they have to get access to that transformer. So we'll, uh, we're will we more than happy to talk to them about what their requirements are. I don't understand what their requirements are right yet, but as I, soon as they do, we'll... we'll th there is, I know, I know there's an access so that yeah. a guy can step back, on the, but if you put yeah. the shrubs out far enough, you're kind of okay. Yeah, we, we just got to be careful about getting too close to the... The yeah, sidewalk. They have the doors facing the sidewalk that they have to open up and work from there. Well, I think if, if you get... If you get it so that you don't see it as much when you're going down the street, meaning you put them on the north side of it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe one or two on the south side, so you don't see it. Sure. I mean, yeah. you, the yeah. doors you've got to keep, yeah, yeah. kind of open. Yeah. But we had this discussion about well, we, Mastriani's property. We have it every time. And and I asked if where those doors could be located could move. Like, do they have to open on the Hayden Row side, right. or could they open on the back side? And he said they could, that they don't have to open on to Hayden Row. What we talked about was maybe a little access walkway around and then screening so that the yeah. individual could, that had to service it could go around to the back <coughs> and open it to the back of the site. But the street side still is screened with a shrub right. and there's a little, just a little cement, you know, pathway around so that what you see is, is the shrubs and the and the door opening happens it's, on yes, the back. It's really right. too late for that because it's been right. situated. It's set you, it, oh, it yeah. is. Yeah. And I'm sure it's all wired in and everything else. Oh, yeah, so I mean, you can't yeah. you can't flip it at this hard, point. Hardwired. Hardwired. Yes. And, and, very. and you know the other the other thing that most landlords do is they just screen it after it's done and you know. In, in 20 years, when you got to pull it out, they'll come out with yeah. with, with the saw. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, they have to do it with right. I mean, yes, it's. I mean, but I I think something to kind of help. Sure. I, mean, I do. I do have another comment. It's sure. not Okay. Go ahead. Really, from for the proponents, uh, as much as for the town townwide, this loop road is an interesting road in terms of pedestrian traffic and. Believe it or not, more people walk in the street than they do on the sidewalk on the loop road. That's because the school really hasn't done a good job of maintaining the loop road sidewalk. So I would like to see the town jump in and, and create a sidewalk on this side where there's room on the loop road that would benefit certainly the cultural arts center, but also benefit those that come from the school and the access parking from the school uh, on the Loop Road. It's, it's a very dangerous intersection, very dangerous. The other problem we have is this stone wall is the Hopkins School Road sign. It says Hopkins School, and there's a sign here that 
tells people where to go to the athletic fields and a sign that tells people where to go to Hopkins. And I think as this becomes more developed in its present state, it's even more confusing than it was prior to uh, the farmhouse being changed over so that people from the south really don't see these signs. They're, they're dangerous signs. They're not very visible from the street. And uh, we have a lot of turnaround traffic and a lot of traffic that goes in and out of roads and they, they didn't mean to go to that destination. So I've talked to Chuck about mm -hmm. perhaps discussing with DPW and the school department about either moving those signs over onto exclusive school property and maybe having uh, John Westling and the DPW do some work on sidewalks. And these side, this sidewalk here is in pitiful shape on Hayden Road. Heavy sand, salt, and snow plow has pitted the whole surface of the walkway. It's very dangerous for, for women that wheel baby carriages through. Uh, it needs some resurfacing, and particularly at the crosswalk that has an LED uh, PV panel to allow pedestrians to cross over. That's the low point of the sidewalk and in the winter it can constantly ponds water and it's in fact an icy surface in two months of the year certainly. So uh, 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 my concern as a neighbor who lives right here is that we don't get a lot in terms of maintenance of these facilities and as a matter of fact this fence which was put when the Hopkins School was uh, constructed was a beautiful fence and then it started to fall over and they've simply put steel posts in to maintain its vertical uh, support but uh, there's a huge area about three fence lengths in uh, length that have actually the uh, soil has expanded and the fence is it just it's just a mess it needs some work so and the landscaping, of course, but that's related to the school. I think a first-class facility like this will only improve the environment and the landscaping here, and hopefully it'll rub off on the school in terms of the maintenance. Dan, what, how are the grades for a sidewalk along the loop road in front of the facility? Uh, I think it work. It'll it'll work. work, it'll yeah. work yeah. Yeah. Okay. The sidewalk ends right here, the public sidewalk. So yeah, I don't know if they have enough space for it. I think the sidewalk would be right on the curb. I don't think we have space sure, for sure, yeah. space between the we'll sidewalk you. and the road. Well, we might want to suggest yeah. to, to John that that might be a, a spot for <coughs> some of the sidewalk mm -hmm. money. Definitely. Yeah, and, and to Mr. DeBona's point, I mean, I assume that you kind of assume that most of your auxiliary parking would happen over in here and they'd go over there. But if anybody were to park over here, you're going to just run up this, go up, you're going to have a little mud, mud track up the hill to get it. They're not going to go all the way around here. They're going to cut up there. Uh, and I don't know whether the slope <coughs> is so steep that you couldn't really do any little path down. But if you did have a sidewalk along there, at least it would give people that, anybody that parked over here, an access point to get on that sidewalk and go up to the front. Because you're going to have people try to go up that hill. You'll have a little, little path beaten into the, into the mud. Time. I don't mean to keep redesigning your site now. No, nah, it's just money, it's Claire. It's just <laughs> money, man. That's all it is. <laughs> 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 you just see these things. I mean, no, you're right. I mean, people we, go where path of least resistance, you know? Yeah. I think one of our original plants had that, yeah. that is the Coffee. shared parking area. And we, we actually designed a, a set of stairs going up that yeah. slope. But it, it just got too complicated. It just made more again. sense yeah. to go yeah. where there was an even so walkway right yeah. out to the. Mm -hmm. Oh, do it. <laughs> just yeah. to run out. But there, a sidewalk would at least give you a point. We're more than yeah. happy to work yeah. with the town and yeah. the school because there's jurisdiction issues in here. Yeah. You know, sure, we'd, we'd be more than happy to work with both both entities to okay. make whatever works. See if we get the DPW to do something. Yeah. A little pull down. There you go. <laughs> well, I, for one, Dan, really appreciate what you did because I was very concerned about those cars. And I yep. drove down Hayden Row and saw what the visual impact was, which was total... Um, did not fit with all the rest of Hayden Row, which is lawns and yards and flower beds and green space and trees, and all of a sudden you saw with the cars and parking and driver and driver, yeah, yeah. And, uh, driveways. So yeah. I, I'm very grateful. Okay. I, any other comments, questions? 
Anyone from the public? Okay, seeing none, uh, I think we are to the point of approving the site plan amendment. And does the landscape plan have to change along with this? Y yeah, I'm going to uh, update the landscape plan with the new curb layout. Um, yeah, right. So I'll get I'll get final site plan and landscape plan up to a lane. But I, I can leave these copies for the record for now if you like. Yes. Go ahead. Could the final mm -hmm. landscape plan be sent to the abutters through um, an email attachment? Or I don't see We'd have to do a regular mail, I think. I don't think we have regular anybody's mail? email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The adjustment to the landscape plan, you're not taking any, any landscape plan away. Any away, no. Uh, hmm. hard for us to approve something that we don't have in front of us. Where are you in your timing for the parking lot changes? When's construction needed to we, be done? We want to pay these pretty soon. Pretty soon, yeah, meaning in the next two weeks? Or three mm -hmm. weeks? Or four weeks? We wouldn't pave it in two weeks. We'll be... We need this for our final bids. Okay. Can we condition that, I mean, prove it with a condition that they return to the board for approval of the landscape plan? Technically not. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's. Uh, I don't know how we should. We really need should have both of them to approve as a formal vote. Right. If we know that you're in we're we're, we're in comf with this, comfortable with this, yeah. create yeah. your bid doc. Landscaping plan. We can wait the two weeks. We'll just go out to bid with this. Sure. And we'll just wait for. The It'll final take you two weeks to get your bids, and you'll have everything all set. Exactly. Good. Oh, will that work? That works. Yes. Okay. Okay. That, works. that won't get us in trouble with the appeal Understand. process. Understand. Understand. Two weeks. Okay. Do we? Do you want these, Ken? Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll need something to put in all the right, record. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Time. Thank you. What? Uh, no. There won't be a continuation. We'll just put them on the end. And it'll be a very short one. Okay. I mean, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Dan. 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 Okay. Geez, we are almost right on schedule again. 8.30. Uh, this is the discussion of... Kobe. Of... 7981 and 83 Hayden Row. This is a proposed zoning change. Uh, Wayne, come on down, I think. Um, Mr. Chairman, can we, do you have another matter that you can hear? Sure. I'm waiting for. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we've got a couple more things that we can work on. Um, Let's see. Let's let's start with the, some of the easy ones first. We received a letter from the Mass Pike. Uh, I think you all got a copy of of it. it. Looks like they're going to automatic tolls in there. The sketch that I got, I couldn't read it really well. I don't know whether anyone else could. Uh, but they're asking for planning board comments to basically removing a lot of cement and pavement and uh, going to automatic tolls and I guess the questions I had for them would be is it looks like there's some parking remaining and is that public parking or is that just for people working on that or whatever it looked like they were keeping a parking lot with 20 something spots which didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me uh, and if it was, you know, I, I, I just don't understand that from the, from the plan. Second of all is what kind of speed was going through this, this thing, because, you know, they now can do those tags at you know, lots of miles an hour. But I bet you they'll bring it down to the exit speed with 15. Maybe they'll be doing 15, but I bet you they can do it at 30 or something. Yeah, they said highway speeds, Mr. Chairman. Highway okay. speeds? And they also said that those uh, that those devices that are going to be on the gantry can um, can uh, 
can read at 120 miles an hour. Yeah, wow. I, oh, oh, they can. I mean, they're not. <laughs> but they won't make it through there at 120 wow. miles an hour. But this whole thing's still right. an exit ramp. I mean, it's, it's an right. exit entrance ramp. It's not. That's right. Yeah. And then, sure, does it say highway speeds on there? It, uh, and then, and then they're talking about. I was not questioning me whether they had a building that was remaining or, it, or whether it was all coming out. Uh, so I would suggest that maybe we draft a letter back to them because they did request it with kind of more questions than answers. But you know, I don't think we have anything to say much whether or not you know if they're changing the tolls. They're changing the toll. I mean. Right. I mean, most people, I think, that use the mass pike all have the tags. I mean, and I believe if, they don't, they if you don't, the they take it there. They read the plates and send you a bill. Okay. So, any, did anyone else have any other questions? Did anyone have a problem with the chairman putting together a letter, kind of asking questions? No, I thought that was a good point about it. why do they still need all those parking spaces? Yeah. That was a very good point. Okay. I mean, uh, but we'll just kind of keep the dialogue going, I guess, is, is where it is. But I, you know, I don't see this really coming much before this board for that aspect of it. Okay. So, are we, you're all set now? Okay, Wayne. Come on down and introduce everyone. So, uh, my name is Wayne Davies and uh, Ken Webb and Phil Antoniatis, Bob Kessler. And Mr. Chairman, we're here to uh, to talk about a potential rezoning of 79, 81, and 83 uh, Hayden Oil Street. Um, this property sits on the, uh, actually butts the uh, business zone, and um, Hopkinton uh, uh, Pediatric Dental uh, is the property that would be uh, the furthest north on Hayden Row to be rezoned. Uh, this would unify a little island of, of uh, rezoning for business. Um, there's also a um, the gas station site that's uh, in the middle, which is also a business zone. And it would provide opportunities uh, for uh, these properties uh, in the future. Um, I think it's, it's pretty self-explanatory when you look at the and consider the location of the property um, and the uses that are on the property. I'm assuming you're all familiar with where, where these properties are. I think okay. most members of this board have heard something on the pediatric dentist uh, property right. for one of their expansions. In, over the, I, I think I've heard two now. <laughs> right. So the um, this is a non-conforming use that uh, is allowed by variance. And uh, as you know, any time that uh, uh, you have a change in a, in a non-conforming use, you need to go back to the Board of Appeals and request uh, approval for that. Uh, by making this use conforming, um, it will free up um, the ability of the owners to, uh, to make minor changes to their property. And it'll also free up the time for the for the uh, for the board of appeals not continuing to hear this. Um, it is a goal of zoning, as you know, uh, to make the uses conforming to the zoning district in which they're they're located. So uh, I think this is in the best interest of both the town and um, you know the owner uh, to make that conforming. Attached to the letter that I, I sent to you, there is a uh, little diagram as to. Uh, both the properties and uh, I highlighted, at least it, you would have it in the original, uh, highlighted the area of the business district. 
if there is a special town meeting scheduled for September, um, we would like to have this considered at the special town meeting. I don't think it's coming up in September, if it's coming up, but I'm October. not sure. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, so, here, I'm here in November lately. Okay. But well, yeah. I mean, I mean, let me put it this way: the next, the next town meeting, whether it be right. special or, or hopefully not, we don't have to wait until the May right. town meeting. The planning board, as the sponsors, have been not pushing to put things on special town meetings mm -hmm. out of tradition rather than anything else. And what we told people last week on a similar request was that if it's a citizen's petition, we will respond to that. Mm -hmm. and and that's, a, you know, we'll, we'll work with that. Okay. Uh, well, I... But, I it, but normally we would go th and, and Zach will hold a public hearing real quick. We'll have to hold a public hearing real quick. Uh, so the real question is whether the selectmen call it with a two-week right. notice. notice and basically they make it really tough. I mean, from what I'm hearing from s s Selectman is they're, they've got to do some spending that was cut out because of the free cash debacle. Right. And then the rest is supposed to be highlighting the school. Right. Uh, well, I think our purpose tonight is to is to present the idea to the board and you know, get your initial thoughts. I know that, that you're going to listen to the recommendations of Zach yep. um, and take those into consideration. Um, but we wanted to present this idea, put it on the table, and, and start the discussion process. Uh, we think it's a good idea. Uh, Have you talked to your neighbors? He's right here, and he's he's in favor of it. You're right, what? 81 and 83. Oh, you're in the middle of all I'm in the middle of all you're, of it. It's part of it, okay. Yeah. What about the neighbor to the north, 77? Um, where are you? Where are you? I'm sorry, to the north would be up the street. Seven, seven, okay. seven on yeah. the um, I think there might have been some preliminary discussions with, with, uh, with that neighbor. Certainly if the planning board thinks that this is something that we ought to, uh, you know, uh, consider and move forward on and, and we look favorably on this, we would have uh, greater discussions with the, with the entire neighborhood. I mean, I mean, that's what's going to sell it. I mean, right. you get two or three neighbors there that are saying, no way. <laughs> I mean. Right. But, I mean, the, the reality is is that this is a business. It's a, it's a, it has a variance which runs with the land. Mm -hmm. So that business use is going to be there forever. Sure. Um, so it's not like it's a change in the neighborhood at all. It's actually making the neighbor, the actual use in the neighborhood conform to zoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, was, I was a bit swayed when the, uh, the gas station suddenly became business, its own business, and the quote in the, in the minutes were according to the town planner's vision. So if that's the town planner's vision, to have that as a business, then I can't see why the vision wouldn't include the properties across the street. It makes no sense otherwise. Because when I bought the home, I figured, oh, well, it's slowly winding down as a business because it could, can't sell gas anymore. And, yeah. and then it just went the other way. I was like, wow, that's the vision. Okay. It was different, something different to me. So, so and, and as you can see, across the street, um, you've got the town-owned property. Yeah. So, you know, we are not in, a, in the heart of a residential district here. But it, it's the bordering. I get it. You know, it's the bordering of a residential district. I found myself right in the middle of it. I just have a question. Go ahead. Through the chair. I know 79 is, is the dentist, the pediatric dental associates. 81, is that a residence? Is it a house? business? It's our house, yeah. I mean, we, we, it's a big you know, we got another kid to finish raising, and then we don't know what we're going to do with it, but selling it as a house doesn't really make a heck of a lot of sense. Anymore. When you have a business on one side, business on the other side. Oh, yeah, right. monitors on the other business side. Across. Right. Business across the street. Right. So. What's behind, uh, just out of curiosity, my own personal curiosity, yeah. this lot one, what is that behind you? Which lot? Right here. Oh, that belongs to uh, Irvine. Irvine. And it's about an acre of nothing. It's There's a little house in the corner, yeah. and that's pretty much its backyard, and then just following the trees. It's 
good buffer, I would think, to the neighborhood behind it. Other questions, comments? Well, I have a comment. Um, because I live on Hayden Row, and this has been presented as being a budding business district. Actually, it's budding a residential district, an all residential district. And basically, almost all of Hayden Row is, is residential. This little area, and back down Hayden Row, is sort of the dividing line that we always consider the quiet end of Hayden Row. It's over years, it's traditionally been called Little Hayden Row. And uh, it, it appears and- I'm sorry, Claire, where, where are you referring to? From, Ken, I'm dating myself, Kenny service station back yeah. down. From the lights on down- On Hayden Row. Is Little, Little Hayden Row, um, the right. quiet end of Hayden Row. Um, this gentleman's home, which is what, 80, 81. 81. Um, appears in a lot of old photographs. The whole area, if you look at old Hopkinton photographs, is actually quite recognizable. It was called Loring's Corner. And uh, Kenny's service station, I can understand, and it's now on JD's or whatever, that has been in service station business use forever, just for years and years and years, I think going back to probably maybe the 50s or 60s at least. Um, but the rest of it, is residential. It goes into a lovely residential neighborhood right behind Kenny's. When there was a house taken down there, other people bought that lot and saw fit to put up a very nice brand new home. They didn't see it as an undesirable residential neighborhood. And then two more do doors down from that has been another very lovely new home erected. Oh, um, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And then a block down from that is a giant office complex mm -hmm. with a Pretty that's school. never yeah. finished it's renting out space for people. I mean, yeah. it's a across mixed. From that is Verizon. Just another block down, and across yeah. from that's the Verizon the, CO the, station. Oh, so it's kind of a mix. It's that's a mix. It's a mixed neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. Right. And there's no problem with living next to that building. Mm -hmm. right. um, exactly. So it's kind of mixed. Is, this is creep. This is business creep in residential neighborhoods. But the use of Claire, can I just comment on that? Just and, and uh, so okay. I, I wouldn't approve of it. I wouldn't support it because well, it is creeping down into a very. Can, can I can I comment? On that? I mean, here's here's the the zoning map, mm -hmm. and the pink areas is already zoned business, right. That's and fine. here's the the Thank yellow you. areas here is a school. a school. Okay, mm -hmm. this this area right here is a business property. It's the it's the, the dentist. dentist office. Yes. So yes. so we, there is no creep down the street. The, 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 I'm talking about the use. The use is already business. And, and therefore, this is not enlarging any business use on Hayden Row Street. It is just simply unifying the existing properties and properly zoning them. I've, I've had trouble trying to sell my lot <laughs> for residential because people don't want to build a house in between two businesses. Well, I'm, I'm sort of stuck in, in I'm like, I don't have neighbors. I know you do. I don't have any, like I don't... There are actually five businesses, five homes got rezoned on West Main Street because those people claim there's no way they could sell their houses and there were all these businesses that going to want to come in. The date not a single house is turned into business. But to Mr. Davies' point, the dentist office, I remember sitting on design review board when the expansions of that building were undertaken and they made specific effort to keep it in a residential style in recognition that they were part of a residential neighborhood and a big difference when you change from what it is now to business is that all of a sudden there's a whole um, host of business uses that are now allowed by right right into a residential neighborhood but, right up against but, the residential but Claire, that, that business use is already uses. allowed in the, in the, that that business use I mean I respectfully say this I understand your point and if the, if the business if the business use were to creep down the street mm -hmm. then then I can understand your concerns but the use is not the actual use of the property is a business use and we're not suggesting that that be changed all we're suggesting is that the the actual uses conform to the to the zoning district and since the 
business use for the dental office has been granted by the town pursuant to a variance and that and the owners of that business use have that until the end of time because that right now runs with the land mm -hmm. that is never going to change okay so um, you know all we're doing is making that lot conform to zoning which is an interesting the town has an interest in in doing that in making sure the uses and the and the and the zoning district are in compliance with each other so I, I understand your your comments but I I respectfully suggest to you that that's not what's happening here and that's not what's suggested okay the is contained by um, Parmenter on one side a business on the other side the dent the uh, gas station and the dentist's office and it'll never go beyond that we are just talking about creating ours and theirs to be all conforming with the business on either side. it's not going to go any further than that we're not talking about going further than 79 or further than 83 yeah well, so there, the there, creep, there have the been people is defined already when you say creep it's but, but there, there have been people that have been in here asking for one more for the potentially for the south well, Mr. And, Chairman, yeah. but that's irrelevant to, I know, to I this position. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I'm here today with my client who has a business use okay. in a in a residential zone, mm -hmm. and that's just simply not not right for for zoning. That's not in the best interest of the town to have that continue. Well, okay. I think the point that the neighborhood needs to be aware of is there's a whole list of uses that are by right uses what becomes business so once that happens their neighborhood is subject to any of these by right business uses as opposed to something that is a special Th permit that's true variance. it, it hope opens up a host of things that may not make good neighbors and you do have well that's the that's residences all that, around. That, so i'm not i'm not here to argue with i, I know but, but claire that, that's the job of the planning board under site plan review sure. All right, that's the that's the job of the planning board under site plan review. Are there are there other comments people that want to make on this? You're here for something else, okay? Well, whatever. Okay. Um, so, do I, is there any other feedback that I can? Well, that we can. You, does anyone else have anything that you want, John? I'm concerned. Um, open but concerned, because there's one thing having a medical practice office uh, and there's another thing saying uh, we're now going to open up and if you look at some of the items it can be a restaurant it can be a bank it can be a retail store so it's nice to argue it's commercial and business already but it's a dentist office which is very different a very from busy 25 parking spot dentist office. right but it's different than if, if I was of course from a dentist office I'd have a different feeling than being across from a right. I understand, but living right in the middle of that, right. 100 yards away from me is Parmenter's. And the three family that are both zoned business, I that can both that. turn into a bank, like a restaurant, like, or anything like, else. I share okay. Claire's. Okay. Can, can, are you aware that this property was, was at one point a real estate office? Yes. But then again, that's different from a restaurant, so, a bank, etc. So but, I'm, I'm staying the concern that I have, I'm saying I'm open to discuss it, but I share Claire's concerns. Okay, and, and I think that, that should there be a change of use, and, and that is highly likely, okay, it's not, we're not gonna have a dentist office until the end of time, all right? At some point, you know, my, my client <laughs> is going to retire or, or, or move on, so we speak, okay? And, and the new owner of that property if they're not a dentist, they're going to come into the to the town and request to get changed to some other type of office. But the 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 building that it's in is not going to revert to residential again. Sure. Okay. It's in a it's in a it's in a business district, and it's in the best interest of the town to allow that business to flourish. Now, with respect to the concerns that you have, those concerns should be addressed by this board under site plan review. And that's why you have site plan review to whether or not the 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 use is objectionable to the um, to the neighborhood is what you do under site plan review, but but you should allow the 
owners of the property the flexibility to be able to manage their current business use. I mean, right now, they must go back to the Board of Appeals if they were to make any changes in that business use whatsoever. And they have been before the Board of Appeals several times, and it's outlined in my letter. Right? That is just simply a, a constraint on business, and we're a business-friendly town here in Hoppington. Excuse me. I understand we're a business-friendly town, but we also support our neighborhoods. And the fact that they have to return to boards is put there as protection to the neighbors around it. And the concern is when something becomes by right, all bets are off, and by the time you get to site plan review, if it's something that is a by right use, this board has very limited ability to make significant changes if it is now zoned and is by right. And I'm concerned about protection of the residential neighborhood. And we're not here to argue. We really are here to give yep. feedback, and that's my feedback. Okay, great. Frank? I, I see it the same way Claire does. I, I think that by variance, we've allowed some things to develop, and maybe in hindsight, we make different decisions, but it shouldn't justify changing the zoning and allowing the creek that Claire's talking about. There are checks and balances in yeah. place, and I think, Mr. Chairman, that's part of what um, the Appeals Board does to a certain extent. Uh, I'm not as objectionable to this plan. It, to me, it looks like it's aligning with that, uh, you know, that area in town. Um, personally, I'd, I'd be okay with... Uh, you know, moving forward and, and uh, hearing this, uh, you know, proposal further. Okay. Greg? Um, to me, I would say it it really just completes the business district. I mean, you've got a business district here, you've got a section of a business district right across the street. It is a business. Um, it, it just makes it whole. Okay. From my standpoint, I just... I'd love to hear what the people here in the Zach process because okay. I respect that and hear what the neighbors all have to say and see where it's at. And like I said, oh, oh, go ahead. Um, Name and address. Pardon? Name and address, please. Uh, uh, Diane Tina Barales and Old Harbor 26 New York Street. And I uh, do want to see that protected as residential. And um, it's part of the problem is from the other side of town. And the world kind of activity on the common right now, which, uh, you know, there's farmers market and that sort of thing, it's kind of crowding out some of the residents. So if it's happening on both sides, then um, unless, I mean, it's, it's distracting from my property. So I'm happy. I, I feel, uh, I'd, li I'd love to have neighbors, you know, to maintain what they're doing now, but I wouldn't want to set precedence where we continue to approach on residential area without the hardship for existing neighbors. Anyone else? I guess you got kind of a mixed feedback. I, I do. Oh, we've got some feedback. Now, um, when is Zach meeting again? Well, Zach, Zach will be reappointed in September time period. And the second meeting, they will have a public hearing where they ask for proposals from everyone. Okay. Uh, and I encourage you to be part of that process. Uh, Who is the current chairman of Zach? John Catino is John. current. Current he's, chair. He's currently the chair? Right. Whether, would it be um, not he, inappropriate if I would contact the current I, chair I and ask to be placed on the uh, agenda? That would be, be fine. And we're going to reappoint probably maybe at our next meeting. I'm not sure. No, she reached out and asked for the nomination on days. People, right. So, so we're looking to start up in September. We understand this one and maybe one other one will be early on if it's a citizen petition. If not, their they, their schedule is okay. is toward a May normal thing, but if it's a citizen petition, then we respond. All right. Well, I appreciate the comments, and it certainly gives us um, 
some food to thought and, and uh, um, gives us a feel of, of what the concerns are of the board. And I appreciate it because that was the purpose of us coming sure. in here and, and, and meeting with you today. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you all Thanks. for coming. Thank you. Okay. I think we've got two other ones, and then we've got a good shot of getting out of here almost an hour early. Uh, the master plan update was distributed a, a economic development section, I believe Fran, Fran and Frank were yep. part of that. Yep. And uh, at this point, I think it's up to each. Uh, that was the last section se segment, so it's up to all of us to shoot to get some comments back over the next mm -hmm. six weeks or so. Okay. Uh, and uh, then we'll start taking them up quickly and uh, you know use the resources that uh, we have. I think Elaine suggested at your September 28th meeting to have like a discussion on your goal, draft goals and stuff. Okay. So that, that'll kind of push us towards that. And that's for the economic development one, that correct? No, all, 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 all of them. And we'll see where we at are on all the ones, and maybe we'll <laughs> limit the discussion to those that are more ready than others. <laughs> uh, but let's try to try to kind of try to work to get that. We're probably next meeting is going to be a very busy meeting. I think we've got the solar folks. We've got a uh, Ash Street tree uh, for the sidewalk hearing. Uh, we've got an awful lot going on. Library. In the library too. So I mean, it is. It's got ten pounds of st stuff in that meeting already, and we're not going to add anything more to it that I know of. Uh, you know, I guess we got to talk about the Center for the Arts for five minutes or two. So, okay. Um, the last item that I have is. Uh, small subdivisions and Elaine put together kind of a discussion basis but I thought it was really interesting for not the senior member of this board but been here for longer than most people other than Claire I guess to see the Larry Feynman memo that uh, that uh, was talking about dead end streets. I believe this was probably written at the time when we got sued. We, meaning the planning board, before I was on it, uh, got sued for turning down a dead end street in on Cranberry Cove. Robert Clark. This is developer Bob Clark, and so they put through probably an exhaustive discussion of looking at all of our aspects of of dead end streets. Elaine updated it with some of the more recent ones, and what I find was interesting on this one was. We did have more consistency, I think, in this where we're at. But I think our discussion that we had, starting with last meeting, where we talked about the one off of Ash Street as a small dead end, mm -hmm. what ends up being exceptional circumstances? And that, do we need to expand on that? Or change, you know, that's what the whole discussion item is tonight as to whether or not we defined exceptional circumstances, or maybe we, if somebody comes in and says, What do you think? Or you even come to us, we hand them this, this long list of what we have and haven't done. Maybe we don't like in today's some of the stuff that was happening in '87 and things like that. Uh, it, you know, it. Uh, uh, well, what 
thing that's pretty constant is that um, they have maintained the pro prohibition and only allowed it where they could pinpoint an exceptional circumstance. And the exceptional circumstances have changed with the individual needs and the, the peculiarities of the particular site. But I didn't really see any instances where it was not permitted without there being an identified exceptional circumstance. They, they have been quite consistent for almost, what, 20 years? Yeah. I think there was only one that we didn't they, what, do. They couldn't clear, what, were clear what it was. But. Yeah. I'm trying to, oh, the dead stone one was yeah. not, was I think the only one that didn't come up with some reason why. That's on this more common driveway. It's just like. Well, but it had to be. But, but that, but you know, that's the type of is you know is is what could, what we're going to be facing a lot more of as you know there are no larger huge or as many huge tracts of land where you know people what do you, what do I do if I got four acres mm -hmm. yeah. that's that's the real question before the board here you know I got four acres. And I got frontage for one house or one house in 40 feet or something like that. What, what do I do? And uh, situation from last meeting. Yes. Exactly what it was. And that one, the we found that there was some exceptional circumstances that there was a tract of land that right. would work for the trails and you stuff. Do a few things. Yeah. It, it, and whether that was a great one or not. Exceptional. You know, it was, there was some value, let me put it that way, whether it was, I, I, I characterize it as a good, good thing, but not a great value. I mean, that, I mean, but, you know, that's, that's a, a judgment thing. But there was a town meeting article, of, I don't know how many years back it was, I'm going to guess it might have been 15, 20 years, you probably remember this, Ken, I don't know about anybody else. Um, they talk, called it the back lot uh, yep. article to try to create a mechanism for accessing back land. And people were vehemently against it. It went down in flames. People wanted to not develop every single remaining scrap of land. And, um, you know, so I think what we've been doing so far is probably consistent with at least the will of the townspeople has expressed through that article, even though it was a long time ago. Yeah. Anyone else? I, I agree with that. I think one of the things that I've heard from people is that knowing that development is going to continue, we're not being careful enough protecting the character of the town. And I think if now you're starting to, uh, in, a, in a freer manner, permit changes and greater development in existing areas because of the land's there, that's only going to uh, exacerbate the situation. And it's not like suddenly, uh, the, I would assume in most key cases, people bought the parcels knowing <laughs> what the situation was. So to create a development opportunity uh, in residential areas that weren't there before, I don't think it necessarily serves a purpose, except for the person who owns that property. And I know where we've allowed uh, development deeper in, there have been concerns of neighbors, uh, et cetera, uh, so I think we've got to be very careful treading down that path. You know, the interesting thing is when you're looking over this list of denials, an awful lot of those are recognizable as developments that eventually did go in. They found a way. When we, you know, held up the prohibition on dead-end streets, they found different ways to modify it so that they could get something in. So it, it, it wasn't as insurmountable in the long run. It's... I, well, I think a lot of them would have been, they might have had 
two or three more lots. Right. You yeah, know, Cranberry I mean, Cove, I think they made a Westcott. Well, well, it is a loop. Yeah, but Westcott does. It was yeah. down but, here as a dead end at one point. Well, I, th I think no, I think there was a, a dead end off of that oh, to maybe. create a couple more lots. Oh, but maybe. I'm not, sure. I'm not 100 percent sure because oh. I don't, I don't remember back that <laughs> distance. Yeah. Yeah. Was not a member of the planning board back then either. I just think that they found a different way to make it work. Well, they obviously made it work because it, it it did. I, I I think our our preference for I'll say the larger lots with the open space type stuff uh, makes it better. So this this pushes people into that type of mode and. But I think I think this is good that we have it in front of so we have at least a basis for exceptional circumstances. I almost wish we had had kind of this discussion and this research before we talked to everyone, you know, last week. But <laughs> I mean, just because, you know, I think I will admit I learned a lot reading through that, which uh, you know I remember most of the ones that are on clean. Uh, Elaine's addendum to that because I sat through most of those, uh, but uh, it it. Uh, Somehow reading through this sealed my resolve to continue to be consistent. I didn't see any clear message for why we should suddenly go off the rails when you see you know a pretty pretty steady record of consistency. Over 20 years. Well, I, you know, the, the real question I have is, you know, what, what exactly, you know, did did we need to define exceptional circumstances better than what we currently do? And maybe, having looked at the record, maybe we don't. I don't know. I, I, you know, that's kind of the discussion point for everyone to weigh in on. I mean, we have the discretion right now, and I don't think we—I don't think anyone's accused of abusing it uh, from a board standpoint. I know there's several of these small cul-de-sac dead ends that Elaine and I have met with with people, and you know, both of us kind of turned to them at the end of the discussions, and I don't see any exceptional circumstances for the town. And they kind of went away. I mean, you know, for example, dividing it into two or three lots with this, and then giving the town the swamp that's in the back. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and, and you know, if it's a half acre or an acre of swamp, who cares? I mean, it's it's no value. There's no exception. A helpful rule of thumb is to be able to have a defined value back to the town. I don't mm -hmm. think you kind of say locked in stone, but going forward, use that as a litmus test. Maybe, maybe we need to change our rules and regulations to the point where we have to find, well, we kind of do find for exceptional circumstances, but we have to find and list the value. To find that out. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, maybe you don't want to make an exclusive list, you know, to rule out some Something's unique circumstance. Um, a lot of them had environmental concerns that, you know, it was better for the land. I mean, there may be some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Water resources or topography. Here's examples of value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, just the listing as an example by no means is it mm -hmm. you know, inclusive of everything. Yeah, it, it's not. But direction schools. You know, for for example, there's there's one that's going to come, I think, before us. I'm, I'm surprised it hasn't already. There's an approved subdivision just to the east of the Irvine to Darrow sites. It's uh, why am I forgetting the name of the road there? Fitch, I think. I think it's Fitch Road, and there's a couple other little sites. Well, this was approved by the board in the early 90s. 
mid '90s anyway, and they're finding that the road, the wetlands have gotten worse, and in the middle of the loop road that's there mm. is probably not buildable under today's mm -hmm. standards. So they're talking about making two small dead Separate. ends into that, which, you know, mm. given that it's something that's already approved, maybe, you know, maybe there'll be a gift of some land that abuts our new Back area. I mean, but I haven't seen that, and I, I, I wasn't the one that talked to him. Elaine had talked to him at one point. So, anyway, that that may be there. I'm not seeing a lot of discussion per se, so I, I guess people are comfortable with where we're at, pretty much. Maybe we kind of let it sit, and maybe if we're <coughs> revising our rules and regulations, we maybe add some more clarity to that area a little bit. Yeah. You know, uh, procedurally, maybe the person going for that has got to really think about that, what's exceptional. And, I mean, looking at Larry Fame's letter, if I had felt that these examples were all over the map, I'd have felt a stronger need to, you know, set down some guidelines, but the fact that it's been pretty consistent and, and there's a pretty clear pattern um, makes me feel that, uh, you know, if you want to articulate things a little better, maybe you could, but um, I think the board's done a pretty good job of the last 20 years considering you know, the the board. Particularly, it's always difficult, I'll say, passing history on from <laughs> folks to, you know, to corporate knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we close out that discussion. If there's any liaison reports, if anyone has any of those, if anyone has future agenda items, please just let me know. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, I don't know when we want to put this on the agenda, but just a heads up, I think I'll work with Elaine on it, that um, Deerfield Estates down on Lumber Street with Capital Group, uh, I, I thought they'd finished the development, but we still have the bond for it, and they've returned a lot of the, they've been turning things over to the Homeowners Association now, and back in... 2005, I guess, they configured a lot to save the McFarland Sanger House, which was almost a 300-year-old historic home in Hopkinton. And um, the Historical Commission has been approached by the Homeowners Association about the condition of the house. Um, there are CPC funds this year to try to start to do some things to stabilize it. But I went back and looked, and there is an extensive landscaping plan that Capital Group agreed to do on that house, which would make a big difference in its appearance from the street, its appearance to the homeowners in the Deerfield Estates. Um, part, part of it, they, on the plan, it looked like there would be landscaping in the back, and what you couldn't see from the landscaping plan was the topography that where there's supposed to be landscaping, there's a 20-foot cliff and they made the back door of the house so that if someone walks out the back door, they will literally fall off a cliff. Mm. Um, so we need to probably have a discussion with them, perhaps discuss using some of the bond money to finish this landscaping and, and put fencing and shrubbery and things so that it is, it is not a hazard um, mm. to people going around the property and anything that town does with the property, those safety issues need to be addressed. So, um, okay, why don't you, you know, work with Elaine and... Yeah, work with Elaine and the Historical Commission we want to talk sure. about when's a good... I think that probably bringing it to the planning board with them would carry more weight because we hold a performance bond mm -hmm. than the Historical Commission just making noise. Um, okay. But it is a danger and it's it's a liability, so... Okay. Thank you for pointing it out, Claudia. Yeah. I really fell off the cliff once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone else got anything else they want to talk about? Look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Anyone that wants to stay? 
<laughs> say no. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone that wants to stay, say no. Ayes have it.